We will now move to the second step, which is propagation. And the propagation step, the CL radicals which were formed in the first step, so these CL radicals, which were extremely reactive, they're going to try and complete the outer shell bond electrons by bonding with some other substance. So the total number of free radicals remain the same in this step. So uh, no new free radicals or, or the quantity of free radicals remains the same. What happens is that we had a molecule of methane. So we had, we had a molecule which, has, which had carbon and hydrogen atoms bonded to each other. And what this chlorine would do is it's going, because it's very reactive, it's going to try and bond with hydrogen. So chlorine, because it's very electronegative as well, so it's going to pull hydrogen's electrons away from the carbon bond and it's going to bond with that particular hydrogen atom. In the meanwhile, what would happen with the other electron is that that electron would go back to carbon. So carbon and hydrogen bond breaks homolytically because hydrogen, which was which was contributing its electron, which was contributing its electrons towards uh, carbon, would then be attracted by chlorine and it would switch its electron. It would change its bond, which was it was previously bonding to carbon. It would change and turn towards chlorine and bond with it. So what's going to happen is the products that would be formed in this particular case is that you're going to get you're going to get CH3 and that would now form a radical because it has lost the hydrogen atom which was bonded to it and since it was a homolytic fission so now it, it has one electron but that electron is now unpaired whereas hydrogen goes and ends up bonding with HCl now the bonds are complete so they're no longer they're, they're no longer free radicals they're no, they're, they are no longer reactive so a methyl radical is is formed so the total number of radicals initially we had a chlorine radical now we have a methyl radical so the radical changed but the total number of free radicals remains constant now that is the first half of the propagation step and what's going to happen again is the same process is going to repeat because now we have a methyl radical so you have you have ch3 and it has incomplete bonds it has one electron which is unpaired so what it would try and do is because a radical is going to be extremely reactive what it would try and do is it's going to go towards chlorine and let's say there there are some leftover chlorine molecules and they are bonded to each other so it's going to try and steal one of the chlorine atoms and bond with it so it's going to try and attract chlorine's electron and contribute its own electron and bond with that chlorine atom and the other chlorine atom would take back its one electron so so the bond in in the cl2 molecule is going to break homolytically again and what's going to happen is that the methyl radical which is ch3 so that methyl radical would end up bonding with one of the chlorine atoms whereas the other chlorine atom which is left over ends up forming a free radical again so the so the free radicals keep on forming and reforming so the total number of free radicals remain the same and this step is going to keep on continuing uh, and you can repeat this step over and over again now as you can see that the two steps of the propagation step uh, resulted in the formation of chloromethane where one of the hydrogen has now been substituted so so these are the two steps that it takes to substitute one chlorine into methane so one of the hydrogen is gone and uh, that has been substituted and you're going to repeat these step these two steps and you're going to start off with chloromethane now because one of the hydrogen has now been substituted now you're going to try and substitute another hydrogen atom so what's going to happen i'm going to repeat the same steps repeat the exact same steps the only difference is that one of the chlorine is now already substituted and i'm now going i'm i'm now interested in all the other hydrogen atoms i'm going to try and substitute those hydrogen atoms so you had a, you have a cl radical again so so look at the look at the last step this step uh, we're going to start off at this point and we're going to repeat the first two steps of propagation so so I'm going to repeat and I have a CL radical and that CL radical is going to it's going to try and bond with the hydrogen so so it's going to steal one of the hydrogen atoms and the electrons are going to bond with each other so that would result in the formation of it would result in the formation of HCl whereas uh, the CH bond is breaking homolytically so this electron 
goes back to carbon and it results in the formation it results in the formation of another radical which is uh, now CH2Cl so that results in the formation of a CH2Cl radical which is the chloromethyl radical and you can you can compare this step with the first step uh, in our propagation step which is this one that resulted in the formation of methyl radical the only difference is that one chlorine is now already part of the molecule so you have to show that one chlorine which has already substituted and I'm going to repeat the other step now and now I'm going to start off with this uh, chloromethyl radical it's going to try and complete its bonds so you have a chloromethyl radical and if there are any Cl2 molecules left over it's going to try and bond with one of the chlorines and it's going to steal one of the chlorine atoms uh, this bond is going to break homolytically so this electron goes back to the other chlorine and what happens is that you have you now have two Cl's in the methane molecule now two Cl's have been substituted and that results in the formation of another Cl radical so now you have dichloromethane which is formed so I've repeated the, the first two steps I've repeated them uh, the first two steps involve the substitution of one chlorine radical into the, into methane and now I've repeated the same two steps and now one chlorine was already part of the molecule so one chlorine was already there when we started off and that resulted in at the end that one chlorine is already there but there's an extra chlorine now substituted into the molecule now let's try and repeat the uh, the step again the two propagation steps again and now i'm going to start off with uh, two of the chlorines have already been substituted i'm going to try and substitute a third chlorine into this um, dichloromethane molecule so again the exact same thing i'm going to start on my starting point is going to be it's going to be two chlorines have already been substituted and it's going to a Cl radical is going to attack this molecule and it's going to try and bond and steal one of the hydrogen atoms so so one of the hydrogen atom would end up going to and it would go and bond with with that chlorine and the bond CH bond is going to break homolytically and this carbon is going to get back its electron that would result in the formation of this particular radical and the chlorine and the hydrogen uh, atoms are going to end up forming HCl so you get HCl and now again this is uh, this is a dichloromethyl radical methyl radical and this dichloromethyl radical is now going to try and complete its bond by attacking a chlorine molecule so so what's going to happen is that this dichloro methyl radical is going to attack a chlorine molecule it's going to steal one of the chlorine atoms from that and going to try and bond with that particular chlorine and the CLCL bond is going to break homolytically and the, the electron is going to go back to one of the chlorine atoms and this would result in the formation of you already had two Cl atoms now you're going to have a third Cl atoms and that would result in the formation of another chlorine radical so now you have trichloromethane so a third chlorine is now substituted and we are left with one hydrogen so we can repeat the two steps and we can substitute one more chlorine into this trichloromethane to get tetrachloromethane